Okay, here we go. Welcome to another episode of Comedy Wham Presents with me, your host, Valerie, and sometime co-host, Miss Purrington. ComedyWham.com is your place to go for features about comedy in Austin and beyond. You can keep up with us on Twitter and Instagram at Comedy Wham or on our Comedy Wham Facebook page. In addition to podcasts, Comedy Wham brings you articles, album reviews, our new column, Rochelle Takes on Comedy, and our monthly Comedy Wham Showcase at Hops and Time in Lakeway on first Tuesdays. Have you checked out our events page for live shows in Austin, Houston, and DFW? If you're a comic in those cities and want your show featured on the calendar, go to the events page and click Submit a Show to complete the short survey. If you submit a show to our events page and tag us on your Instagram story, we'll share with our followers. Looking for ways to support all these resources that we provide? Well, you can donate to Comedy Wham on PayPal, Venmo, or even Patreon. Search for Comedy Wham on Patreon and check out our subscriber perks. Now, let's get back to our podcast. Launched in 2016, the podcast project brings you funny people and their stories. As a fan, I like to delve into a comic's background and motivations and will usually take a detour along the way. Consider the interview a way for you to get to know the folks that make the Austin comedy scene, excuse me, the comedy scene in general, as fascinating off stage as it is on stage. If you like this podcast, please rate and review us. Today, I can't believe I'm going to be saying these words. I am talking to a member of the Tenderloins comedy troupe since 1999, star of the Misery Index. He's an accomplished writer, executive producer, and actor. He's written a new book every single year since 2018. And by the way, his first book, Awakened, is the reason that he has a, a very lovely fairy, fairy tale wedding story. He loves Pinot Grigio and loves growing vegetables in his garden. Thanks to my boyfriend for that fun fact. And uh, if you haven't figured it out by now, he is one of the stars of The Impractical Jokers and The Misery Index. He is coming to Austin this Saturday at Paramount Stateside at a very reasonable one o'clock and four o'clock show. Grab your tickets now. And now Comedy Wham presents our guest, James Murr Murray. Hi, Valerie. How are you? I'm doing good. Do you see, I'm, I'm representing my, my ski Hey! Ski. <laughs> all right. I love it. Uh, by the way, for anybody watching, uh, yes, I'm in the backseat of a car because I just literally one minute ago left the set of Impractical Jokers. It was a punishment day, so I'm not home yet. Uh, I did not lose the episode today. Thank God. Yay. It was Q that lost, oh. and uh, it was great. It was uh, He <laughs> took it like a champ. It'll be an instant classic punishment on the TV show. Oh, well, I mean, I think a lot of them are instant classics. There's, yeah, uh, we have, so my, I have a teenage son. He is 15 years old. And for the last, I'd say 10 years, about as long as Impractical Jokers has been on, anytime we would travel to my mom's house, which was in the, in the, in the sticks, there's nothing else to do. She had cable and we would spend all day just watching the loop of Impractical Jokers shows. So we are huge fans. We caught you in San Antonio when you came down a few years back. And anyway, huge, huge fans of yours. Thank you. That's great. Thank you. <laughs> uh, my podcast, I always start with an icebreaker question and you, you, okay. uh, you get the treatment too. One okay. word, one word to describe your past. My past? Uh-huh. <laughs> Checker? <laughs> is it you know uh I'm, my past uh one word to describe it um fun fun it's been a, it's been a lot of fun i've had 11 years of a lot of fun uh with my best friends on tv yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, you know this is a kind of a fan-based uh podcast so it's not you know i'm not official media or anything so i get to kind of ask different questions than the official media sure person uh, would ask and one of the questions that I did want to ask you is since you guys have all known each other since your school days at what point if you can pinpoint a memory at what point did you realize these were your best friends gosh I mean I you have to go back to high school they they were my absolute best friends in high school 31 or 32 years ago and uh we used in the car right now we used it against Q I have a VHS tape. I, I went through the basement today and found the VHS tape 
of our old like improv show from high school together. Heard it. Here it is. Oh I, my I mean, gosh! And we we played it on the screen as part of the Q's punishment today. And uh, I mean, I, I knew it in high school that they were my best friends for life. And as soon we went to different colleges, and as soon as we graduated college, we just instantly came back together and formed our comedy troupe and then failed for a really, really long time before <laughs> we got our Impractical Jokers, you know? Yeah, it, 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 that's one of the reasons why I love the show so much is because it's not just about the hilarious pranks that you play on each other and uh, the, the brutal punishments. Uh, yep. It's, you could tell how close the four of you, you know, three, you know, I know you're all still four friends uh, through thick and thin, um, it's that's what comes through and that's why I've, I've loved the show for so many years yeah I think that's uh, something you can't fake you know that that kind of history and chemistry is undeniable and I think the, I think the biggest compliment we get on the show is that we remind people of their best friends they grew up with you know like the, uh, yeah. like when times were good and you know and they, they were their, their closest knit friends I, I consider that a such a huge compliment that they feel yeah. like they know us and they can like have a beer with us you know yeah yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I, I struggle with this personally, budgeting time for all of the responsibilities that I have. And um, one of my like practical questions that I wanted to ask you is how, how in the world do you manage uh, taping two TV shows? You're writing a book every single year for the last four years. Uh, yeah. You're a newlywed. And yeah. I... And now you're on tour. And how? How do you do this? <laughs> you know, uh, I, I'll tell you how. I, I think, keep in mind, the guys and I failed far longer than we mm. succeeded. Actually, it's about even now. We, we, it took us 11 years to get on TV, and now we've been on TV for 11 years. So yeah. we're just now breaking even with failure, you know? <laughs> so, so for me, like for my entire life, I was like, uh, it's, it's always what I wanted to do. I wanted to do many things. I wanted to be in a movie. I wanted to be on TV. I wanted to write books. I wanted to sell TV shows and movies. And, and when we finally got the chance to, uh, I, I, it doesn't feel like work because I'm doing it with my best friends. And also it's just, I, I guess, uh, what, what do they say? What's the expression? When you love what you do, you don't work a day in your life. Right. right, right. So for me, that's what it is. You know, and it's, I think, uh, since getting married, that's given me a better work life balance mm -hmm. in a good way as the kind of like the one thing missing in my life. So now, yes, I raise a puppy and have a great garden and uh, all those things you mentioned uh, and play game nights and murder mysteries. And I think I've got a better work-life balance now, thankfully. Uh, but uh, it's, I've always wanted to do it. So when, when it's a passion of yours, when everything is a passion of yours, then none of it feels like work. Yeah, that's uh, very sage words <laughs> for yeah. anyone that's feeling, especially some, somebody that might be listening that's in the comedy uh, arena you know it's there's a lot of failures before you oh yeah out. gosh I, I tell you the first the first book i wrote you mentioned awakened mm -hmm. i wrote it in 2003 oh. i spent a year i spent a year writing it and couldn't get a single person to read it and it took wow. me 15 years to to get on impractical jokers i sent the same book into harper collins they loved it bought the trilogy and it hit number one in the international bestseller list so like you, you, it's just it's a waiting game and patience and hard work and, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, that's, that's really stunning to me uh, for a couple of reasons. One is I, I, will, I will forever kick myself in, in, in the butt for this. When we were at that 2018 show in San Antonio, that was, you know, part of your release. At, after the show, you were signing oh, books. Yeah. And, yeah. And I, it was in San Antonio. I'm here in Austin and the road was calling me to get back home. And <laughs> yeah. I, I wish I had stayed not only to meet you, but to get the book because I haven't read the book. Shame on me. I was reading the first, I read the first chapter on the, you know, the nice Amazon mm -hmm. peak, uh, sneak peek. Sure. That first chapter is so good and <laughs> so compelling. Thank I'm like, you. oh my gosh. Thank okay. You. Well, now I got to read the trilogy and all the others yeah. and I told my son, you, the the one that's coming out, uh, I guess in a few weeks, is yep. you know, aimed at the middle school age range. He's a high schooler, but he loves all of those, you know, 
I have it. I have it right here in the car with me. There oh it is. Oh my gosh! Oh, it was. It was. So cool. It was also part of the punishment today. It's called Area Fifty One oh. Interns. It's uh, about a, a group of middle grade students, best friends, who uh, land an internship at the infamous Area Fifty One, and they have to save the day every single book. It's a three book yeah. series. Oh, very nice. Very nice. Yeah. Uh, I I have to ask because you you have wanted to to be a performer and producing and writing movies uh, are. I mean, just from that first chapter alone of Awakened, I'm imagining a movie. Oh, that, that, that's exactly, yeah, that's exactly how we write. You know, everything we write is very visual. Uh, it, 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 uh, it pops off the page and you can see the movie playing out in your mind. That's, ex you know, because my background is in TV development. So over the past 15 years of TV development, uh, I've written hundreds and, or if not thousands of TV treatments for reality shows and scripted shows and game shows or what have you. And when you write a treatment, it's all got to be cliffhanger endings and sharp, uh, pithy writing, active verbs. And so yeah. our style is, I, I think our style is immensely readable, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So you are, you know, you're famously known as part of a group. <laughs> what what was it that and then you, you you've written the books which is very well it's you 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 have a, a writing partner that's that's a co-author but it, it's it's an independent endeavor what was your motivation for going out on the road as a solo performer I, you know the guys and I come from a live performance background it's my favorite part of the job like mm -hmm. I love the tv show obviously I, none of this would exist without it but being in front of an audience, there's, there's no better feeling. And uh, and so uh, about a year and a half ago, I created Mer Live, which is me on the road alone doing stand-up comedy and telling stories from set. And also, by the way, in Austin, not every venue has this capability, but they have the technology in the club in Austin to do Impractical Jokers live. So I'm going to send a comedian out into the, into the streets of Austin wearing an earpiece and it's being beamed onto the screen in front of the live audience where I am with a microphone and I get to tell him what to say and do and see and put him through the ring of what we deal with on a daily basis on the TV show. It's gonna be great. We, it, it, only a, very few venues have the ability and you yeah. guys have the ability. So it's, yeah. uh, it, it's great, it's the best part of the job. And Joker's tour starts up in January. And so in the meantime, until it starts up, I, I'm doing what I love the most. Yeah, yeah. Now, did you, for each of your cities and for any venue that has that capability, are you picking a local comic or is it somebody that you traveled with? No, you know, uh, our dear friend Jiggy, his name is Mark Jagarjian, we call him Jiggy, uh, is, <laughs> opens for me and performs with me every every show. Uh -huh. And he opened, he opened for the guys and I at Madison Square Garden. He's a great guy and super funny. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. That's awesome. So we, it, it's essentially we're in for a, a variety show of fun and uh, a yeah, glimpse. Yeah, into... you're, you're going to get to see the magic of the TV show live in front of you happen. Yeah. And it's all improv. I, you know, it's whatever I am inspired to say or do yeah. based on who I see on, on the camera. So it's a lot of fun. We, we had him last uh, two weeks ago. I was on tour. And coincidentally, the comedy club had a Lego store across the street from him. Oh. And so I sent him into the Lego store where he's probably never allowed back. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so much fun. Um, okay, so I have promised my son that I would ask you a question. Okay. Uh, I, I, and I told him, okay, you picked a question that I bet you he is very comfortable answering because he's, he's sure. probably been asked this a lot. So. Um, he wanted to know what has been your favorite punishment on Impractical Jokers? Oh, very good question. Uh, my favorite, there was an episode where Sal lost and chained him down to the floor and we lowered kittens on his chest. Oh, yes! And he's, he's terrified of cats. And so he's crying, a grown adult male crying hysterically out of fear of kittens. Oh, uh, that's just so fun to me, you know, so oh. much fun. That was a good one. That was such a good yeah. one because we are we are cat people here. Uh, yeah. You can see by my little screensaver. I see that. Yeah. <laughs> Surprisingly, my cat has not made an appearance uh, <laughs> <laughs> during this. Um, okay. Well, I'm going to ask you another fun question. 
Uh, did you know that today is it's uh, make someone happy day? I didn't. I, I, I don't. You know, I should celebrate it. I didn't know that. Is it? It's a national holiday. I didn't get my wife a gift for it, but I'll I'll run out on the way home and see if I can grab something. <laughs> well, I was I was my follow up was what's something that you've done to make someone happy today? Oh wow, good question. Uh, uh, I uh, I uh, my wife was having a long day working, so uh, I sent her from set uh dinner so she didn't have to cook anything for herself because i was running late to get home so i sent her uh, a really nice italian dinner and also her birthday's next week so i've got some surprises planned i i executed a few of the surprises that she won't find out for another week very nice very well done i have to say you know again calling back to the people that are going to be listening to this they're they're comics and they're all jaded about love and relationships yeah. your story is such an inspiration uh, Thank you. And I know it makes you happy to talk about it. So tell us what a what a beautiful story this was. Sure. I, I will tell you also. Instagram. <laughs> oh, thank you. I will also tell you, Valerie, I'm coming up to the spot in the road where okay. I always lose cell phone reception. If I lose you, I'll be back one minute later, just so you know. Perfect. It's going to be in the, in the next minute and a half when we go around this bend on US1. Okay. It always happens, but we'll get through it. Okay. So I, I just, I know, you know, because I've done so many zooms in the car on uh -huh. the way to and from set. I know exactly the dead spots, but it's coming up. <laughs> and there's another dead spot in about 15 minutes. We'll deal with that hurdle when we come to it. So, <laughs> okay. So, uh, so I told you I wrote a book in 2003, couldn't get anybody to read it. And then uh, it took me 15 years to get it published. And when it finally came out in 2018, I decided to throw a book uh, event, a big book launch uh, in 2018 in June. And uh, I, I, after the huge event, I had like an after party for fans and my wife happened to be in town and she came to the after party and, uh, and we hit it off immediately at the after party. And I remember going back to my apartment that night and my, my closest friends, my best friends came back with me and I said, did you see that girl tonight that I was talking to? Oh my God, she's beautiful. We totally hit it off. And uh, I said to her that night, uh, if you ever want to go on a date, let me know. Three months later, she let me know, and she made me she made me work for it and wait, you know, and uh, and then it was instantaneous. Like I I I knew very early on that I wanted to marry her, and I never believed people when they said you know when you know. And when I, when I met her, I knew. I and keep in mind, I always thought I would never get married. I I, I was forty three yeah. at that point. I was perfectly fine to not getting married in my life, not having kids. And I met her, and I knew. And um, and I, I I bought the ring, you know. Months before I proposed to her, I knew it. I knew Aww. I was going to do it. That's yeah. so lovely. So, you know, believe in love, Thanks. people. Believe in love. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, uh, okay, I'm going to go in the super way back machine. You said you've always okay. wanted to be a, a performer. Was your first performance mm -hmm. as a stand-up or as an improv group? I, I, I uh, improv all the way. Even my standup is a lot of improv. You know what I mean? Because every single show, the show I do on Saturday in Austin will be completely different from any others that I do. There's a lot of jokes that I've worked on that I have honed, you know, specifically. But uh, we come from an improv background. That's my training is an improv. Uh, that's what we did for many, many years. The guys and I together, Impractical Jokers, is an improv show at its core. So. We get to set, we have no idea how people are gonna react. We make it up as we go and that's it. It's a veiled improv show. It's an improv show in disguise. Yeah. I, I wanna give people hope because you know, you've know you obviously achieved incredible success, but tell us what your very first performance was like. Did I lose you? <laughs> God, we got that spot. We're in the dead spot of the road <laughs> right now. We're going through it. We're okay. pulling out of it. Pulling out of it in about thirty seconds. It's always this spot, right around the bend. I told you, we just passed the bend. <laughs> can you still see me and hear me? I sure okay. can. Yep. Yep. Yes, yep. I'm back. Yep. yep. Okay. Good. We're, okay. we're pulling past the dead spot. We're, we made it. We're good for like 10, 12 minutes before the dead spot. Uh, so uh, our first show was on, I remember the date exactly, it was March 4th, 2000. 
uh, my, I remember the date because it's my nephew's birthday. He was born on that day huh. during the show. Uh, huh. It was a little 50-person uh, theater we rented out in Manhattan. Uh, it was basically our friends and family bought tickets to see us perform. It was a very fun, terrible show at the same time. It was all improv. And, uh, and then I, rem- I remember the last show we did before we got Impractical Jokers. Literally one year before we uh, created and sold the TV show, we did a show in Manhattan. Uh, two people bought tickets to see us perform, and they spent five dollars a ticket. And the theater theater cost us sixty five dollars to rent, so we lost fifty five dollars on the night. And we split the loss four ways. That that was uh, twelve years ago. A year after that, we we sold Impractical Jokers, and then uh, and then a decade later, we sold out Madison Square Garden. So there you go. Yeah, magical, absolutely magical story all the way around. Uh, but just you know to remember. Anybody listening, you know, it, it took took years of, in your words, failure to achieve, you know, this this level. That's cool. Uh, I I know that you're you're kind of, you know, when you get to such stratospheric levels of, of fame and 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 popularity, there's not a lot that you can reveal to people, but is there something about you that you want people to know? Oh, interesting. Mm. I think in another universe, I'm a farmer. <laughs> I really do. Like literally, literally uh, right now in my backyard, we're rebuilding the entire garden and expanding it. It's already huge. We're wow. expanding it to twice the size, building a whole new fence around it. I've got everything. We're, we're growing stuff indoors by seed in preparation for about a month from now when we'll actually plant it in the ground. I think I was supposed to be a farmer. And I think what I could, I could see Murr Farms becoming a thing one day, like long after TV show, uh, the TV show comes and goes and long after the tour ends and what have you, I think I'm just going to like raise fruits and vegetables for a living. <laughs> yeah. So, so my boyfriend, Steven did this research and he's, he's rattling off the long list of all of the things that you've planted. And I'm like, okay, well, you, I, you won't believe it. I, I was born with the, the biggest green thumb on, on in our backyard, on our property, we grow. Ready? Uh-huh. Uh, I grow. I have eight apple trees. I have a vineyard. I grow Pinot Grigio grapes. I grow entire fields of corn, squash, uh, zucchini, uh, beef steak, tomato, cherry tomato, plum. So many plum tomatoes because we make sauce from scratch. String beans, avocado. I have an avocado tree inside the house. Wow. No joke. Uh, uh, eggplant, uh, pumpkin, uh, basil, parsley, rosemary, thyme, pepper, sweet peppers, bell peppers, uh, radishes, uh, potatoes, sweet potatoes. Um, hold on, I have many more to go. Uh, what else do I grow? Uh, zucchini, cucumbers, strawberries. Blueberry, I have blueberry trees, or bush, bushes rather. Uh, s- lettuce, Swiss chard. Kale. We have a, we grew kale last summer. I don't think we're gonna do it again. Huh. We did grow kale last summer. Uh, I, and the list goes on and on. I have like <laughs> 40, 50 different things I grow on the property. <laughs> I don't know why I'm obsessed with this, but I I must know: is there rhubarb in the mix? No, we don't grow rhubarb. Maybe one day. Well, I'll let you know. But I think my next TV show will be me farming. <laughs> you know, I swear. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Well, you've uh, you've been so generous with your time. Let's uh, let's uh, let you uh, make that stop off the side so you can get a treat to make your wife Melissa happy. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have a a closing question for you. Are you ready? Hit me. Yeah. It is one word to describe your future. Oh, wow. Good question. Um, bright. You know, I feel, uh, gosh, I feel like a different man. You know, uh, marriage suits me well. It does. And it's uh, balanced my life in a whole new way. Uh, I feel right. I feel like uh, it's great having a partner in crime, you know, and yeah. um, and the show's back and I'm excited for that. Uh, the new episodes are great. The tour will come back. You know, obviously the past two years has been crazy for everybody, but we were very blessed. We 
I can't imagine the, a, the better way to spend the first two years of a marriage than for the first year I was home all the time as we all were. Right. Wow. And I'm like, gosh, I can't imagine a better way to kick off uh, the rest of my life than that. You know, uh, I feel uh, creative, creative, positive, you know, I feel great. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's it. Well, at, at a minimum, we know we can expect a book a year from you. Don't let us down. Absolutely. Area 51 things. Interns comes out in two weeks. Book two of Area 51 Interns comes out in October. Book three comes out in March. And then my new serial killer novel comes <gasps> out next fall, 2023. Oh, I'm it's all called, about that. Uh, It's called You Better Watch Out. It's a serial killer novel set during Christmas time. <laughs> oh, my God. I love it. Right. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> it is unnatural how much i love serial killer stuff so oh you love it start i know you have awakened but start with the stowaway the stowaway is okay. my last serial killer one it's great let okay. me know if you see the twist coming uh, okay. and by the way if anybody likes tickets you can go to merlive.com to get tickets for austin or any other city i'm coming to yeah absolutely okay well let me do a little closer here that is a wrap on comedy Wham presents james murray tell us where we can find you on social media as if we don't know uh and Let's do another plug for you. Sure. You know, gosh, I'm everywhere. I'm uh, <laughs> on TikTok. I'm uh, at James Murray Jokers. On Instagram, I'm at The Real Murr. Twitter and Facebook at James S. Murray. Uh, and then go to murlive.com for everything else for, um, you know, uh, tickets to shows and my books. And you can find all that stuff there. Fantastic. And this is going to be a quick turnaround episode so that uh, you have something to I mean, for our, our little fan website here uh, to promote this Austin show that you've got two Austin shows on on Saturday, March 5th at one o'clock and 4 p.m. So for people like me, this is great. I can be home by <laughs> eight in my pajamas and it's awesome. <laughs> That's it. We'll get drunk together in the afternoon and then you go home and sober up at night. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. Well, we hope you've enjoyed learning about how James Murray got to be the comedic genius you heard today as much just as much as I have. This has been Comedy Wham presents James Murray. I'm Valerie, and that's been funny. Can I call you Murr? Please do. My friends do, and you're my friend. <laughs> Thank you, Murr. You got it. Thank you, Valerie. <laughs> Thank you. You got it. Take care. Now. Have a great night. All right. Thanks. Bye-bye.